to me, I wonder how much faster is productivity and these costs falling to the, you know, the margin of a cost of production. I wonder how much faster is that change going to be atop of those rails, that protocol, that bedrock and foundation that doesn't have that instability that we're used to now. Yeah. Like, you know, things change so fast now, I wonder how, to what degree faster will they change once this has occurred? Two things on that. It would be hard to see, it would be hard to have an appropriate measure of that happening unless you're through Bitcoin, right? In, so the measure will be Bitcoin yeah. prices yeah. falling against Bitcoin. Everything else would be a mismeasurement for, um, from, this, uh, from this system. And mm -hmm. I've, in that other piece I wrote too, it is that all money is is information, right? You don't actually want more money. We think we want more money, but we want, it's a ledger describing what we have and what we think we need in our own minds to be able to get what we want. That's all it is. So yeah. if, you, if you have misinformation in the ledger, which is money, then you must, as a byproduct, have misinformation everywhere. Now, yeah. now think about, now, okay, now we have that misinformation uh, in the ledger. We're going to have misinformation everywhere. Let's automate that misinformation. What would society look like? <laughs> How hard would it be to, yeah. to try to figure out what was going on through that yeah. misinformation? And, and who would benefit from that misinformation? So. And, and the, the almost terrifying thing to me, it, it, it's concerning to me that some people seem clueless about this, but it's all, frankly, it's almost more concerning that people seem aware that this is happening. You know, people talk about the algorithm, or they talk about the system, or they you know shake their fists. You know, I, I think everyone can feel that that misinformation is permeating every level of society and growing. And it's almost terrifying to me that even though everyone feels it, it's the the hurdle in our brains to understand where that problem actually lies. Is so great that it's because we all want to think, and 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 that's why that's why when I said I try to disprove the hypothesis mm -hmm. and try to try uh, uh, try to look deep on where could Bitcoin fail, what does that uh, look like, and from a first principles level, is because I understand that, and I understand it in everybody I see, and and if it if it, everyone in I see thinks they have perfect information, yet they don't. Yeah then it, that must be for me too, right? I have to take that as face value that it has yeah. to be for me. And what do you do, what do, you do to try, try to solve that in yourself to make sure that you don't fall into that same trap? Mm -hmm. Because, um, and it's only then kind of through that critical, uh, uh, critical lens, okay, my model of the world, all of my predictions, all of my observations are matching my model of the world and it's actually getting better and better and better. Yeah. When that's true, then you, you're not trying to Oh, what happened here? What ha it's just, uh, it, it, and if your model of the world, if, if you're being surprised today, then your model of the world is likely wrong. Yeah, and, and for me, just like you're saying, for me, that's the exciting and terrifying thing for me is because it's like, I remember thinking, oh, maybe in five years, there'll be a nation that adopts Bitcoin as legal tender, then you have El Salvador. Maybe in, you know, 10 years, you know, or a few years or whatever, maybe we'll have some sort of banking um, problem. And then, you know, just last month in March, mm -hmm. we had that for the first time, or at least the, the very tip beginning of it and you know it's 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 alarming how quickly things are happening and i wonder uh, what could theoretically be next down the pipe but at, at the same time even though within the ledger that relies on theft to survive even though the future only looks darker and darker at the same time it's equally optimistic because that also means that on the ledger that doesn't require theft to survive the future is only brighter and brighter so it anyway. really is optimistic it yeah. really is optimistic why wouldn't you want to benefit from a uh, from being a node in a network, where all the output of all intelligence on the, on the planet flows to you in the form of lower prices, mm -hmm. well, I, I, I I'm, I'm really I'm really surprised people wouldn't want that, right? And there was no way that anybody could co-opt that from you. It yeah. was all of us for all of us. Yeah. Um, the um, the free market would work perfectly. Entrepreneurs would work perfectly in there. The uh, you would constantly create value until as and as prices uh, uh, fell, everyone would benefit from that. And you yeah. would benefit more as you were trying to create that to ha happen for society. Mm -hmm. So I don't think, and, and when people talk about libertarian or this or whatever, yeah. I think all of these labels are constructs of different times when we didn't have a money like this. There's never in history yeah. been a money that could be decentralized and secure. And so, so it required political systems that effectively said, by law, we're going to inscribe these rights to the society. When, when, by, and and those, those laws that inscribed 
re freedom of the individual and free to, to society provided really great economies um, because of all of those individual actors uh, creating, creating value. Um, and then over time, the laws change to be able to support the, uh, because money is superordinate than laws um, and, money, um, and money gets corrupted. So we're just in a system, we're just in a system change that money can't be corrupted from the system. You know, what, one of my metaphors on Twitter that people really liked was that of Monopoly game, and that yeah. you have a board of Monopoly, and you have the currency of that game, and there's a certain set of rules, but you also require a banker to manage the rules. And, you know, what happens when you have one game of Monopoly transitioning to another game of Monopoly, and the new one doesn't require the banker to enforce the rules, because the game itself enforces the rules. And then, and then obviously, you have to get into what happens to underlying money within those two games and that transition there. So... Um, you know, but I, I think that makes a lot of sense, and I think people don't want to hear that. And I think ultimately, and this is something I really wanted to ask you, I, I think ultimately it comes down a lot of it to emotions and one's willingness to admit that they could be wrong. And online it's often said that Bitcoin's an IQ test, you buy Bitcoin the price you deserve and all that. And, and I wonder, what if Bitcoin is not an IQ test? What if it's even more so an EQ test? And it's not just about intelligence. It's also about your emotional state. And I, I don't know, I, I wonder if you've ever thought about that or perhaps it's something else entirely or some blend of them. But do you think emotions play a larger part than... Yeah, and I think um, I, I just did a podcast with Breedlove on, on this topic um, that, uh, that um, I, it, we don't see the world as it is. We see the, uh, a world as it is through our filter. Um, our, our, our filter bubble. And if I saw, if, if I see, if I'm a victim in the world, then everything, I wouldn't see, uh, the, uh, I would see that exact feeding back at me. I would see it's everyone else's fault. Uh, this is the, uh, this, uh, everything always happens to me and it would feed back to me if I was, so if I showed up somewhere else in the world. So we see the world not as it is. We see the world as, as our bubble of information. Um, needs it to be, um, and uh, and I, I think in that in that so if you if you if if you get your reaction from hate, right from and and anybody can do whatever they want, but then uh, there will be a small subgroup who will come to you and say you're so great because I like that too, and they'll do the same thing, and it'll feed back it'll feed back to you, mm -hmm. and then you can see this magnify itself everywhere and uh, on and, and social media. Whatever you determine is your subgroup will feed back, uh, feed that back to you, and and actually it'll repel other groups. Um, so you're you're seeing the world as as you see it, not as it not as it is, and other people are seeing it as it. So their world is just as accurate for them as it uh, as yours is is for you. I try to for me, I just try to stay above that noise. I try not to react when um, when when somebody. When somebody says something terrible on Twitter or something like that about me or to, then or about something I said, it's one of the three things. One, they're right, and I and I can I can update my model and 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 and, and take some information uh, into trying to make that better. Two, they're wrong, right, and it doesn't matter. Um, or three, they're trying to bait you into a conversation to try to gain uh, uh, gain awareness at your and and if, when I watch people take these the bait all the time I, I, okay you do you if that's what your time should do over and over and over if that's how you're you want to live your life and be in that cycle over and over then great but I don't want to if you are buying Bitcoin if you are trying to understand Bitcoin better I highly encourage that after the education you quickly get into that self-custody route it's very intimidating for people. It's very hard. People understand where to go. And that's why not only do I put this free content out there for you to enjoy, but I also do everything I can to accelerate that self-custody adoption. So I do work at the Bitcoin Advisor. If you have an interest in a collaborative custody multi-sig solution and a state plan, not just for you, but for your family, for your kids, your loved ones, your business, your church, your organization, whatever it is, if you are looking to have an understanding of self-custody, the trade-offs of single-sig, of multi-sig, collaborative custody, uh, fully self-sovereign custody, whatever the case, um, I'm happy to help. Our primary goal, my primary goal 
is to help you have a secure transition of your Bitcoin off exchanges into your own hands. Okay, I'm here to simplify the process, address your challenges and your questions, and ensure you feel confident every step of the way. So you can find me at thebitcoinadvisor.com slash Luke Broyles. You can book a free consultation with me there. You can book a free meeting with there. I'm happy to answer any questions you have. And it, I care far less about if you hire me or not. I care far more about education, which is why we give out dozens of pages of free content for you to enjoy and consume and learn about Bitcoin self-custody so that you can have generational wealth for you and your future generations without losing sleep. So if you like some of that uh, free uh, documents and free education about uh, Bitcoin. I'm happy to share that with you. Again, just go to the Bitcoin Advisor, uh, Luke Broyles. You can find my um, booking for meeting a consultation with me. So thank you again for enjoying this Bitcoin educational content. And secondly, whether you use me or not, whether you do single SIG, multi SIG, whatever the case, please start taking self custody, start getting your Bitcoins off exchanges as soon as possible. Link in the description. Thanks.